So welcome to the Willows. A soft return of out there. Former carry down the Gregory. And the Rhinos take the field and we can quickly run through that side here. That fullback mark is centre there. There is Leroy Rivers, Martin Bolden, Brad Godden, Francis Cummins, and the halfback, Dal Powell, and Ryan Sheridan. And the forward, led by Byron
joining us now as the Salford commentary is Salford looks to come away from their own line. Yeah, and uh, Salford under new management, our own management at the goal, but they're both at a straight start away from the red. Great play, great passing from them, far more tackle than what we've seen this year. Great right, interplay, up to Zip there again, that's all recovered. So a few changes for Salford Reds for today. Nine foot fifty two feet this season, and a few at the end of last season. And the odds uh, are going from winning this game. Oh, absolutely significant, and that's, I think, the decision. Very much for himself as well, because I think it was looking as though he was going to pass the ball then. And uh, it's also starting with, with, with some verb, which is always good to see. But it's also the starting many of our games this season with verb, but not been able to keep it going for the whole 18 minutes. Two changes today, Bobby Thompson at full back, who he plays to. Um, so I don't he's injured again, he says Scott Martin is, it's uh, Scott Martin along with Mark Johnson now, he's very pleased to see Mark Johnson out there, he's his second game to my knowledge, and Stuart Little and Paul Carey's the, the centre, so it's been a centre right there for the Salford Reds, Salford, so far was strongly in these opening stages of the game, Martin Thompson's out there, great for the second game, great for the first game, and running, running, and that was a fabulous start of the Salford Reds, that was a super start to the Salford Reds, it came from the moon over and the last thing that's the passing was great. And it was just a good deal with a lot of and I don't know the story in the first two minutes. It's a long way to go, but a super start for the Colford, particularly when you're a team at the bottom of the league. That's a great start. How did you do that one? That's a rather a great kicker. Yep, making the only second one. That's a good start for the Colford Red. So the big news from the Rovers is that Andy Gregory, who has been the longest serving Super League manager, no longer Salford looking to replace him in that position. And the Salford team, a few changes today, starting with Greg Gusto and Greg Gray, albeit against the odds. Salford out there on the day one, Sunday, this is going to make the team ought to be the freshest team they played their weekend game on Friday night. But certainly in these opening stages, long, long way to go, Salford getting off to the same sort of flying start that they did against the Warriors in the last home game and David Bradbury hurling himself to the 20 metre line but that was a, a fair reception to make three tacklers him down also back again and uh, Paul Harkin no way through for him and it's also Tracy I think they'll be three for that return home but it's a very good one pass down to the right but good tacklers in the line now Stuart was threatening in his first game since his concussion Good hand from the Salford Reds, good play from Paul Sheeran, good play from him, and Salford Reds breaking his lead right on the line, a double tackle is what the Salford Reds fans claim, play from the line, good hand to go from the Salford Reds, good pass on, David Bradley has to hang on and still still forward, still tries to release the ball, carries in support, can't be used, it's all strong, Martin Thompson, this time a little kick into space, Blakey's got his eye on it, who's his face? And it's got to be a Salford player, another six for them, the one player can't take it cleanly, Salford chasing well, there's an overlap on the left if he can use it, long pass out, quickly thrown on his own. Great yeah, exciting start from the Salford Reds, as good a few minutes that we've seen from them all season. Great gusto from them, a long way to go, and now can we capitalise on this position again, so close to the right on the line. Blake is in the line again, Hudson Smith. Oh, good tackle on Hudson Smith. The Swedes are getting too stride, but the ball continues to come right. Start to go and close. Oh, the ball drops, it goes down, and that's going to be a knock-on. So at the end of it, the, uh, the defence in the lead line is holding out quite convincingly, but that warm applause from the Salford fans recognises that we've seen a passage of play, which is going to bring some hope to them. Certainly will bring them some hope. A good shift in defence there for the Ryans. They've covered all the options there. Blakey was looking to do the same sort of run around where he got his try from but it wasn't to come and so Rhinos will have head and feed here Ryan Sheridan does exactly that he finds power from the base of his scrum now he goes himself good running there from the players just been selected into Andy Goodway to train on squad for the Great Britain side this is Danny Ward maybe he'll be in a Great Britain shirt in years to come Newton finds Hay another one of these great players who could be in the Great Britain defence at the end of the season he's just out of the training squad this is foul foul driving up he picks up the just a ball right. Good play there by Anthony Fowl. This is Fowl Fowl. Over the halfway line. Good running there from the veteran standoff. Now Newton, Newton finds it down at McDermott. Driving up over the 40. Still down back down at McDermott. Up goes out to Morley. Good running there. The half break to Paul Blakeman. Now he's moving on. Sturdy, Sturdy. That's Golden. Golden looking for a gap out wide. 
So there was two men in defence the there. One of them Blakely putting the tackles in, making sure the Lions couldn't be capitalised. It's the last tackle. Sherman kicks again. Again, it's a high one, but not to us. This is the ball bouncing. Sherman takes his own kick. Several hands on that one. Referee Steve Presley takes a long, hard look at it. Explains to Ryan Sherman that he was the player that first got his hands on it. And it will be turnover to the Salford Reds. Salford playing the ball out now. Yeah, well he was looking very threatening in that, uh, in that attack and uh, releasing the ball, very convincing the during the tackle and having extra pace on the, on the Salford Reds, it seemed on a couple of occasions. But for all that, the Reds hung on in defence. That was Dave Mason making a big impact up front. Salford was looking to release if he could, not quite. That's on with it though. Magnificent take there by Francis Cummings. So experienced these days in the Rhinos team. He kept a cool head there and got the ball away. Now this is Marvin Dolan. Defence up very quickly, but he strips and turns and spins. Good work there by the centre. In for the injured Richard Atmore, goes in for surgery today on that abductor muscle injury. Now, Newton, coming out, finds Ward, a very flat ball there to Ward, he did a good chance to run onto it and makes a good 10 metres with that run. Newton finds Sheridan, Sheridan has power outside him, he has sent a layer as one of it goes himself and now finds sent a layer. Sent a layer, didn't turn there, on the other, oh and he's just dragged down the ground there by Hudson Smith. Now this is Newton, finds Sheridan, Sheridan's the line! Goes over the sideline. That's a sort of typical of Ryan Sheridan's season. Yeah, wonderful vision there from Ryan Sheridan. He's had a, a superb opening for 1999. He realised it was the last tackle, and Salford did well to scramble back and stop the initial break from Martin Miller. But they weren't lined up straight. He spotted the gap in the defence, and it was pure pace that took him through the first line of defenders and over for his, uh, what is now customary try. And a great place to play there for Powell and, and Centelair in the middle of the field. And quick play by Newton, got it out wide to Sheridan. His step and his pace, and there's only, is anyone in the Super League going to stop him in the kind of form he's at the moment? It's a real sucker blow for Salford. And again, the, just the, the presence of the Rhinos attackers. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing now. It's just the, the presence of the Rhinos. I'm afraid of the ball, so quickly, and quick hands and the application. He's got to be sitting, but for all that, that's not the start of him. He was to see that to see to come back. We see it so often this team. We saw it against Whitefield on Friday. We saw it down at Wembley where the Rhinos, when they get the ball back and they have a roll on, he likes to make things suffer. And we mentioned there about the offloads and the quick play of the balls. That's what the Rhinos' game plan is. They like to catch things. They know they have superior fitnesses on most things in shooting. They like to use that to their full advantage. We may only be 12 minutes into the game, but both teams are backing up after the weekend and fitness will be a crucial factor even at this early stage in the game. Whoever's right for the game will win the game. Blakely kicks off, goes over Sheridan's head, he's sitting there to foul, he controls with his feet, and then collects. Right. So he's talking about a soccer round here, he's heard the game, and uh, Andy Sowell puts himself in the cut of the air. This is Andy Howe, he's going to get to the game, 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 he's now Newton finds it down on the ground, it crosses the half line, we have Morley, Morley, short little ball to Morley and he goes over the 40, good work there by the Salford born player. Newton fires it out to Ward, Ward runs straight onto the ball, good hard direct line, makes some easy 10 metres for the top forward, at least he makes it look easy. This is Sheridan, speeding round on the blind side, fires to Godden, Godden, hands off, he's so strong he's broke Godden in the tackle. He manages to find extra yards every time he goes into the tackle. Last tackle, Sheridan finds Powell. Powell kicks to the corner. Livich chasing him. Will he get it? Knocks it back to his teammate Golden. Golden collects. He spins in the tackle. He has to get rid of it. He does to Marcus Sinale. He comes round to with it. He's in 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 it. Oh, trying to find out why to get it. But the attacking option there for that is their no, no willingness and no their ability to put on a great side of football to reward these fans that have over memory. Now every set of six leaves are looking dangerous, they're keeping the ball tight, the support plays good, Morley's getting the ball away, and you've got to be impressed with Danny Ward in these opening stages. He's doing the hard yards and he's making it uh, look like he's done it for years. The Salford are a bit anxious to get away from their own line in this set of six. 
Well, it's just as well we'd expect the static to have been made then. Right, about four passes before it was actually finalised, and, and that's been one of the things. Unfortunately, we've been seeing in the South of Red this season, they've not been making their tackles count. And already he's just looking as though some of the players are just taking a lot of difficult breather. And that was the attempt to release the ball to a, to a colleague who was nowhere to be seen. Hudson Smith trying to knock that on there, but uh, there was no one in the same reach. In fact, there was someone in the same reach. It was the line of number four, Brad Godden. Now, St. Alaire gets the ball away to Sheridan. Sheridan on his side of the line, sees in the inside ball to Ward. Ward still going. Take three players to bring him down eventually. Now this is big Barry McDermott turns and goes off one foot and then off the other. That's so much of Barry's game. In fact, he can change directions. He's such a big player. Now Powell. Now he goes the other way to Sheridan. Sheridan has Powell. He comes down the inside. Powell back to one tackle. And there's no one going to play. He still could really look through it like a demoralised side there. There was no attempt, not even a season, about putting the tackle in there. And uh, I don't think Anthony Farrell had an easy try all his career. I put that down to the press of the Leeds defence. Superb work of Salford with bringing the game away. Hudson Smith going up a blind alley. Threw the ball away more in hope than expectation. It was Brad Godden that dropped on it. And from then on, uh, Leeds were just pushing Salford back with every drive. Again, Danny Ward, Barry McDermott at the half of it. Sheridan sniping around. A good switch of play from Action Halfback. And as you say, an easy walk in for Anthony Farrell. So, Francis Cummins will look to convert. He does that. And uh, Jim Delano uh, leading for the first time of the game and really Salford there with a solid state in defence. Uh, not for the first time this season, that has to be said. 46 points conceding in each of the last two matches and uh, I think anything anything fewer than that today will be almost a moral victory. Uh, it was Hudson Smith, I think, who was the one-on-one -on -one who, who missed the tackle and there was nobody else there in support. And if Salford had been found wanting in previous matches this season and having having a match only three days after the previous one against the Wolves, he's obviously going to make this one a particular good one. What's disappointing for me is to see so few people here. Yes, apart from the uh, the stand opposite here, in the currency position was hardly a soul around the ground. Uh, I know people are pointing to the fact that Manchester United are, are playing tonight, but uh, if you're a Salford fan, you're a Salford fan, and uh, you would expect them to turn out and support their team, which is in a very low edge nine defeats in the season so far, they've lost down to Gregory, they do need their supporters if at any other time, this is Morley, Morley, that flows out the back door to Powell, Powell who's just an electric tonight, goes over the halfway line, and he's eventually brought down on the 45, now this is Newton, Newton going very quickly from the play of the ball, Barry McDermott, not happy with there with Paul Fanning, intrusion into his face, and Sheridan puts a high ball up, this is going to drop for Sheridan, is it, he's just going to handle it, but it's collected there, Good sound there, played there by Mark Dodds. He looks to go around the outside. He beats off Leroy with it once, but uh, the lost in final. If you get away from the mug, he won't do the second time. Is the case there? Yeah, I like Mark Dodds. He only set the start, but he's a pleasing scorer at this level for England. John Coles and Hull. And uh, a change on the topic. A thing that's Joe Farmaro, who's come on to the place, Paul Sutton. A senior Farmaro on the bench for the first time this season. And he's always been a proud pleaser down here, as always. And the to work hard to, to fight for whatever ground we've got. Paul Coe, going forward, well, gets on with it quickly. Nice and tight to the short side, but uh, it's just a one-man field. Not going to make this ground against the, the resolute defence of the Rhinos. But there's a high kick, just in pressing the defence as the stage is good. So it's not a particular lead, and it's a comfortable take for the ball. The first thing we have seen in Marcus Finnerhe this season, his uh, security underneath the high ball has been a vast improvement we've seen in previous years. The, uh, the dock is going down the, uh, the tunnel with him now, so he'll patch it up and over. I'll be back into the game. Now, Dow Power, Fierce Capella, he'll want to be part of this. Now, this is Ward. Ward driving up the middle of the park. Good work there by Danny Ward. Magnificent run by him. And he's looking so adapt at this level. He really is. He wouldn't think this is his first game. Harris feeds it out to Morley. Morley looks to offload, but he just takes a safety first option and he's wrapped up on the half line. Andy Hayes, good away from Danny Hart, good play there by Andy Hayes, going to a 40. Good several work there, made 10 metres for the Rhinos. This is Sheridan, Sheridan has Farrell outside him, he goes to the inside ball to Farrell, Farrell driving up the middle. He had the arm free there if he wanted the offload, but he just couldn't turn around quickly enough. Now this is Harris, Harris running at this defence, he finds Morley, Morley offloads out to Newton, Newton had to get around behind him, she couldn't get the ball away, gets away from the way, can't get the ball away, Paul Newton. Oh, Paul Newton, what a wonderful pass. 
and wonderful play there by Marcus Sittler here. Certainly ensured that Marcus Sittler was fighting for the first time. So Cody went forward, Sittler to get it dropped back, and then took the ball out of the back door. Certainly he can go with confidence in every single game he plays. We just see, as we come up to the Thomas position, Lee Jackson sitting there watching this game. We don't know what's going through his mind because Terry Newton is just seizing this opportunity and it prolongs the chance that we hook a spot and taking it every buffer. Uh, possibly the pack of the season already there from uh, Terry Newton. And Lee's just showing the willingness to keep the ball alive. But it's also very intelligent support play. Darrell Powell's been at the heart of it while he's been on there. It was simple direct rugby from the top. Finding that game getting the ball away. Danny Ward driving it in and then great hands from Terry Newton. A man to keep the last pace from now was he was never going to be caught. It was simple direct rugby from the top. Finding that game getting the ball away. Danny Ward driving it in and then great hands from Terry Newton. A man to keep the last pace from now was he was never going to be caught. And uh, the second thing that Yeston Harris is going to do is register for it. And he does exactly that thing in the SPS Air Boy. The points go out. Right in front of the post is never in doubt. And yes, and Harris has been uh, yeah. the ball. Yeah. 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 14 points to 6. It, it's not looking good for the Reds. Yeah. Not as it. Um, that early stage has evaporated. They're already just laying off these tackles. It was another situation of subject to see. Whereas looking as though their colleagues have, have made the, uh, the tackle complete. And you can just have nobody to put a hand on him. And he was off in the standing start to the normal stage. And, uh, Oh dear, it's back to four the year, 20 minutes on him, 16 foot. Yeah, Powell drives it up. He jumps, just short of the 20. All comes out now. This is Rivet, he's coming in from his wing. Good work there, so often we see it from the Rhinos. Look at the wingers, not afraid to do the hard work and drive it out from the line line. This is Hay, Hay which off low to McDermott there, but kept the ball seeing that McDermott just, just in front of him. Now this is Harris, finds Morley. Morley has got an outside and he hands off once. But he's dragged down to the ground there by Paul Garrick. And so far, my way. This is McDermott. McDermott over the halfway. This is Groff Lowe. He needs to make sure he keeps the ball there. He does that. Wraps it up tight, close to him. Last second now. What options for the Rhino use? He goes to the short side. Newton. There, kick right, there for right. Newton. But it's well connected there. The space wasn't able to get there. And Bobby Thompson is able to run away with the ball. Still having a win, but not really with any, any chance of breaking the uh, line. Oh, and he's running out there on the left side, which is pinched a little bit. That's Craig Mason, who's gone off to the top of one. Three places. Oh, loses the ball in the tackle. No. Could be from the hip, but the tackle first to the end. Great play there by Barry McDermott. And the players are down and it's clear that Barry would have had a chance to get there. So he dropped off the tackle. Now this is Sheridan. Sheridan looking for one. Is it? He's got him. Got him to the line, is it? Oh, he's just dragged down on the 10 there. So I've seen Steve Brad got him spin out of tackles there and find the extra meters that get him over the line. This is Hay. Hay looking for the dummy goes himself over the 10. The line is like a battering that ram now on the red line. This is Sheridan again. Finds Harris. Harris has run his round in. This is Sinclair. Sinclair hands off one, but he's, there's a reception committee of three red players there to meet him. Wanting to get the ball quickly into play as Adrian Morley pushes players off. Harris finds Ward. The defence is up very quickly there. Steve Fred will have to master this 10 very closely. Ward taking a knock to the ribs there. A big hard hit there. They were able to line him up early on. He's just sat down with his haunches now. And uh, if he has taken him off, he has to go. He's had a great start to the day. Yeah, he's a big strong fellow, but I think he's turned on his ankle there. And it looks like it's very at the time. Obviously, yeah, Mark has taken a lot of tips open. It looks like he's going to be selling the blood thing. Danny Ward just doing a tender so I think he probably will be coming off. Maybe it was his, his lower leg. But it looks like he can play the ball. Yeah, and we've got uh, 23 minutes on the clock. You'd expect to grab Murray to spell his uh, props at this stage. Ball knocked on there. By the red Millen Rhinos will get the ball back again now. Just what it's tough for what they want is. Now, this is Harris. Harris has high outside him, but he goes for Godwin. Godwin for the line, is it? Hands off one, still going back, Godwin. But he shuffles down there. Hay in the dummy half, finds Harris. Harris out to Sheridan. Sheridan running at the line, finds McDermott. McDermott goes straight at the red defence, but he's dragged down there by Hudson Smith and two others. Newton has Sheridan outside him. Jeremy switches play to Harris. Harris has high outside him. But he goes again to 
missed move there. Cummings got the ball, but he's dragged down there. This corner, the touch side did well to stay in there, Cummings. This is Hay. Hay driving at the line, looking for a gap. Will it appear for Nick Wells? And can he get to the line? Oh, just caught there on the line. So much strength in the legs from Andy Hay. Steve Tracy says the ball wasn't played correctly there. Andy Hay looking to get the ball away quickly and put pressure on the race defence. You see Paul Sterling come on now as a replacement for Marcus Sinclair. I think that's gone into the bug bin. He came on with uh, stitching on his head. And uh, so Francis Cummings drops the full back to Sterling coming onto his left wing. And uh, Chelsea get a good chance now to get it away. As the ball drops down to his here onto his own position, and they'll be looking at him as much pressure as they can now. Yeah, There's uh, two really good fixes in defence on the top of Dredd, but Neil Downs now driving forward. And in particular, Bobby Thompson, who sees a big knock just as he took the ball and the kick through, but still managed to, to make a fast saving tackle. But good, good defensive players in the top of Dredd, preventing the uh, so the score from the lead down now, they're in score three times. David Bradley's trying to find some room. Now they're focused to the end of the end, Martin Thompson trying to find an open. Paul Carroll. They're in no way through. The, uh, the speed of the lead to stop down, start in speed of defence, and it's much more quicker than the Bradley Packers lately. Having to make the kick forward, and that's uh, taken with time. Uh, they're coming from this time, they're able to run the ball out, but Blake is taking good, he's kicked well. And we see Danny Ward making way now for Darren Cleary. Darren gets the ball away for Vivek. Vivek driving it up over the 10. Good work there, he's doing the play there for the, uh, the two wingers for the Rhinos now. Now, Sterling looks to go himself, he's got a half break, can he go? Oh, he's just caught by Ansel down and pulled down. Now this is Morley, Morley driving forward, pulled down over Morley, Morley looks to offload to meet him, he's always used to court. Terry Newton haven't won one of those games of the season so far. This is Darren Fleer, he's just Leon, and he spins the attack and he's still going. Darren Fleer will love playing against his soul for defence. His big rampaging runs are just doing to a game like this. Kick through from Harris. It's all for that time to come away, I think. And he's wrapped up there by Godden and Hay. Again, really good defensive stick from the soul for dread. That time they're making their tackles complete and effective. Well, for all the signs, Lee Brown was threatening all the time. So, and he's only going to break through that Lee Brown was defending. That's another better line right there now. Set marking. That's the start and come back inside. Lee's defense again very quickly. That's the final there, still a hard break. That's the final to score. That's the final to score. That's the final to score. If we kick over, all that's back to the game. Well, it's also fun for that to be a season, as Lee says that. And all of a sudden, Lee John knows the ball can still play. As a chance to do. The position there that the kicker was touched in his way through. Certainly, the FBC person saw nothing, and I saw nothing from up here to indicate that. Doug Godden goes down there. Oh, it's just Sterling, Sterling. On as a broken replacement for St. Alain, with it, um, Luton rather, Fee, Fee Cleary, Cleary driving it up, pulls down on the 45. A good defence instead of six from Salford, they closing up the line well, Harris feeds it out to Farrell, Farrell, still only up to the halfway line, and Luton on the last half an hour has to kick, they do just that, and it's dropping in between Thompson, he picks it up now, he throws it out, but Morley's winning the chase there, Adrian Morley. It's a big hit on there. What about another good defensive six from the South of Red, and that's good in comparison to some of the things that we've seen. But very much so, Lee's tackling preventing South of from getting into any attacking floor at all.
Track down the side of Cyprus, Challenge will it back now. To the level, that open space comes running straight back and gets straight into his stride and he's brought down there. Now from Sterling, Sterling has Sterling outside and Sterling receives the ball and drives it up to the halfway line. Good running there from Sterling. Got it in at dummy half. Just a bit there, but he gets the ball away. Hayes feeds it back inside to Godden. Godden has Sterling at the line, but he just takes the tackle. Now Newton finds Cleary. Cleary drives it up over the 40, still going down. Cleary still going. He nearly makes up to say there. Good running there. Now this is Harris. Harris feeds it out to Fowler. Fowler. Ball up to Bullock, but he just couldn't take it. Knocks it down onto his thighs. It's still forward. That stalks the flow of there. Attacking play, but we do get the feeling that maybe one more Rhino score before half time and it could be actually this stuff in the second half. And so Godden looking to put this kick in it, getting on carriage, but they're coming away now, Salford. And now we're looking over the to put uh, a good a good, good on defence, but still they're going to get on attack now. And uh has on that first attack that it's brought the opening side again, we're not really seeing Salford in the second fourth inside the Rhino's half. Good hands this time though, it's just going to have to see it this week, that's the second to inside, for a half chance, it's better than that point having the pace, and they've got a good, and they've got some time in that second, and the South of Tams will certainly agree with him, and no doubt Stuart Nichols would as well, because he's out flat, flat and on the floor, and the penalty will go over there, the South of Red, and that case, Stuart Nichols has over and above the South of Red, He's there to be seen on the last half and on the defence. It's all the way for all that. I don't feel a very good 10 minutes after having conceded three tries in, in, in short time early on. He's stuck there attacking them. Very convincing with him. Now he's got a couple of times just about the league. Uh, Rhino is 20, 31 minutes on, 16 kicks down. A score for the Red Pills certainly would be putting right back in this game. Well done, at the first third forward, into the 20. Oh, it's not too fast, and it's just too bad, too slightly. That's the second stop, and that line is too fast, it's so simple, it's all for the locks down in the first two plays. Well done, now he can't get away on his own. Martin Thompson's in the line again. This will kick through, into space, the ball's running and running, and he's watched into touch. So that's a straight defence from the Rhinos yet again, the kick from the Salford Reds in the end just, uh, just drifting out of play and uh, the Salford Force will attempt to other score comes in all. That's how we're going to put these bits and things looking tougher today, aren't they? Yeah, they certainly are there. Cool, calm, collected in defence. They just let the ball drift into the touch. They know exactly the job they're going to do. I think it's a valid point that Phil made earlier that the, uh, the blood bins have disrupted their attacking flow. The clearly see Yeston now, it's his first real thinking run that we've seen from him. Straight to next a couple of yards. Now, bring it out with Cummins from fullback. Drives up, he's over the 20. And we're looking to get a big run on here and really get the momentum going again, the Rhinos. It's slipped off recently since they brought the score to 16 6. We've got 33 minutes on the clock, so we are for another score before half time. The German offloads to Newton. Newton sees Harris. Harris still going, but he's dragged down there by Neil Baines amongst others. Newton finds M Morley. Morley's been quiet in his first half. Gets an offload out to Hay. Hay knocks it back to Harris. Harris goes himself. Kicks and goes and dummy. Still running there. He gets the ball away to Newton. Newton has Golden outside him. He feeds Golden the ball over the ball. Just as ball is there. And uh, spurred on by his early effort, Terry Newton. He thought he could work the horses there, but uh, just drifted forward. Yeah, overcomplicated it there. Because Leeds actually had a, a, an overlap if they could have used orthodox passing. But again, the first sign that Leeds attack was uh, coming back to what we saw in the first 20 minutes. All started with an offload from Barry McDermott. Clever work from Yeskin Harris. Showed the ball, but went himself. He's, he's just perhaps lacking a yard of pace, having been uh, out of the last couple of games. But all it needed was orthodox passing, and uh, Terry Newton trying to repeat his, his dose of earlier. Now with the Reds defence hanging on still. Up the support isn't there, the extra pass isn't there, and the one man rugby, you know, doesn't win anything in Super League. Neil Downs, Neil Foley, 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 Ne
Ryan himself had served, two things to the other inside her own half, but two foot to the line over. Just what the new management, uh, or the caretaker management rather than Salford wouldn't want it to see. They had a chance to put something together, get the pressure away from their own line, and uh, a needless knock on there. Big hit from the Rhinos defence, their trademark, and the ball coughed up. Now Sheridan will feed the, uh, feed the scrum. And what will Lee do? They've brought extra men over, so they're going to try and work the overlap on this far side. Harris, Harris feeds Morley, Morley round the back. Still going, but he's dragged to the ground there. No, he's still going. It's coming to Anna, coming. Down. Well, that says much for the, uh, the upper body strength of coming there. Huge build that he's managed to put on. This is Morley this time. He drives up to the 15. He's eventually dragged down there. Newton finds it down. It's down. It's driving up over the 10. Still going. It looks down. Off goes out to Newton. Newton finds Harris. Harris out to Golden. Golden can't try to work. He's gone backwards. Still just been short closely. It's too closely. And this is Farrell. Farrell driving up. Off goes out to Golden. Golden has the outside and goes himself. Hudson Swift in the tackle there. Dragged him to the ground. Newton finds Fowles. Fowles just picks it up, just gets the ball away to Harris. Harris can't collect it now. And this is so far now that he's coming around here. And it's now that just a punch is back in there. And he kicks the last of the there from the gun. Yeah, I've got that great defense and show for this again. The big hit down is Thompson. Mark Johnson in the line. He's going to stop me. Oh, good play from him. So, so for turning the defense into his uh, interview. So, what is the ball? What is the ball? A and great defence it was as well, when the Celtic fans recognised that. But the Billy Boy has left, and the Celtic are going to go to the Celtic game. They're starting to go to the Celtic game. And, uh, it's been a good fight at the game. So that's, uh, they're looking as well, they're at the front, the better team is still only holding their own for the last 15 minutes or so. And the two points doesn't work very much at this stage, but likely fans have all good stuff to decide the final 10 meter area, and now it's a question from Salford. Can do it this period of play just before half time into what could be an all important final? Well, no bang. Go on, go on, go on, go on. And now the red fans wanting to get it down. Everybody's having a look at it, but after all that, uh, it's, it comes to, it's a waste, isn't it? The first, I think, it's a waste. It might have looked good, it might have brought the tears, but the chances are going over the next position. This is pretty remote. Look, 16 six. You really should have been uh, looking to get a set of six within the Rhino's 20 metre area. Went to go and knocked on there, and needs to have head and feed, and uh, Brian Sharon will say thank you very much. This is Harris. Harris steps, looks to go himself, gets the ball out to Cummins. Cummins pushes the ball backwards, and Morley collects. Morley offloads now, it's Sheridan. Oh, dangerous stuff from the Rhinos inside their own 10. Trying to concentrate and just bringing the ball out maybe. Now this is McDermott, he steps and comes down. A big hit there on McDermott. The three, Steve Percy comes in quickly and makes sure there's no silly business. Now this is Leroy Rivet, who comes into the line. Good work there from the young winger. Now, hey, hey, looking for runners, one of them is Harris. Harris fires out to God and Jordan can't quite hold it. Just knocks on. And really we've seen a, an error screen patch in the game the last 15 minutes. Really no one's looked uh, too comfortable with the ball. We've got two minutes remaining in the half and uh, Salford will be looking to do something in this set of six. I'm not sure they can do better than the other one, but a very impressive Salford just raising their passing tempo in that particular set. By finding some second wind from somewhere and it certainly bore its fruit because uh, the error from the line was, was, was unclear. Okay, straightens up though. Goes a bit further. Good running, good determined play from Paul Carriage. Well received by the Celtic fans, but the chances are coming around. Can't break the line, most defense play, but Celtic like going forward again, having a good period in the start. Martin Thompson. Oh, over. Ball dropped, and that's where uh, the penalty is going to be given, not the knock on. And uh, another period of play that promised a little, nothing more than a little, comes to an end before they uh, get to the hit the first second. Very disappointing. Well, that's been a very scruffy game so far. Apart from the opening 15-20 uh, minutes, Adrian Moore has signalled exactly where he was coming there. That's a rather bold statement from the second rower. I suppose when you're as good as he is, you can do that. This is Brad Goddard, who makes it over the 30. Good run in there by the Australian. Newton finds Fleary. Fleary drives straight up. 
Darren Fleury knows no other way than forward and he shows it there. Now, Newton, Newton. The referee, uh, back on and appeals to the referee for offside there, but Terry Newton just keeps on going up to the halfway line. Now, Sheridan sees McDermott. McDermott has fouled outside him at Dummies and goes himself and looks to offload. He does that to Harris. Harris has run in one of them, Golden. He tries to get out to give it, but it's collected. The referee says the ball wasn't forward. Got across the ground, yet the touch dog says always Lever. Good work there by Lever Lewis. Always alert. Now, this is Harris. Harris puts a big kick off. Kick up into the corner. Adrian Morley's running for it. And uh, referee Steve says he says that Morley was interfering with the capture there. And uh, Salford had a chance to run it out from the long way. Salford's defence has really, uh, really improved a few matches in this last five minutes. It's set the lead down over at base. And uh, going into half time to get uh, no one in the section from the Salford <laughs> And Leeds, all important, they do get those two points and get themselves back on the road to Old Trafford. Only a short hop, given a jump from here, of course. And uh, they'll be looking to put that back on schedule tonight. They've already suffered uh, a number of defeats. So it's important they get these wins against Wakefield Friday night, against Salford tonight. They'll have a tough challenge up to the uh, Northern Ball on Sunday. But again, that's a game they would expect to win. And then they have got two games against uh, Halifax and back to the up, which will be tough local derby. So the Rhinos already out there, and here's how they return from the blood bin. And so Paul Sterling goes back onto the substitute bench. And just see uh, Yeskin Harris is still out there. Salford will kick off, kick to the Rhinos. The Rhinos looking very confident, Marcus Delaire shouting to Marvin Golden. There is an air of confidence about these Rhinos these days. The, the, the challenge stuff especially, but well before that, even going back to the first game of the season, when of course they beat Wigan in the Challenge Cup, the fourth round of that. They were looking to be uh, a very confident team, a very elegant team in terms of the way they play, saying the way they uh, approach games. So Salford sort of kick off. Ryan Sheridan collects, he feeds Anthony Fowle, who drives it straight back at Neil Baines and Malcolm Alka. And the tackle's put in there, Newton finds Hay. Hay going straight forward, skips out of one tackle, makes it up to the 33. Newton directs some traffic one way, then the other. This is McDermott. McDermott hands off Thompson, but Thompson still tenacious in the tackle, brings him down eventually on the 40. Newton feeds Fleary, Fleary. Big hole there for, uh, for Darren Fleary to drive through. He's up to the Salford 45. Newton finds Morley. Morley driving at the line. The tackle put in there by Alka on the ankles. Ball's gone forward there on the ground. Certainly the initial pass from Morley went backwards. It's rolled forward. Justin Harris having a long chat to Steve Presley there just to clear up one or two grey areas that he thinks appeared in the play there. But uh, Salford, good defence as you see at the end of that first half continuing and they'll uh, have head and feed on their own 35. Yep, and uh, certainly one of those marginal decisions going Salford's way on that occasion. And it looks as though it might have been a steal, but Salford nonetheless will be thankful for that. But, uh, uh, a whole bunch to go with Salford right at the moment. Oh, well, that's a great burst from Joe Farnano. Great play from him. All of his own, but a great burst up the middle. Salford fans love that, now can Salford keep this momentum going. Good long pass out, well taken. But there is defence. Make the tackle. That's a good start. A good line. Good deep line, Blake is there. Blake is set, trying to find a way through. Yes, releases the ball. Michael, Michael Malta. First tackle, Salford still outside the centre. Only going to Thompson, if he kicks through. Oh, what good cover from the Leeds Rhinos. But good start to the second half of the Salford Reds. Well, a minute gone in this uh, 
second half, this is Centre-Lair back on the field. So, although he started the game, he's a fresh pair of legs after that rest in the blood bin. Rivet gets out of one tackle, takes it up to the 30, good running there by the Leeds winger. Seen that wide, this is McDermott, it pops in his hand but he manages to collect it, Andy Hay very close in support, takes it off him on a short little ball, this is Newton, Newton finds Cleary who is barking orders there for the ball. Baines gets the tackle in, brings him down on the halfway line. Now this is Harris. Harris, last tackle, puts the kick through. Thompson gathers it and runs it back. But he's got Harris and Farrell in on the tackle. They put him down on the 10. Play there by Marcus Settler just to give time. He kept his eye on the ball and he goes into the tackle. He's brought down there by San Milo and Alta in on the tackle. This is Sheridan. Gets the ball away offside there. For the uh, the top of red. And for Lee get a penalty. Harris kicks it on his own 40. Drops on the 25. And take it on the 35. McDermott powers it forward, he makes the 10. It's one of his rampaging runs, he hits the ball and then drives the legs and get those extra couple of metres. Now this is Cleary, Cleary, another powerful runner. The Rhinos seem to have a big breed of them at the moment. Now foul, foul, still going, skips out a tackle. It was only around one leg and he managed to free himself from that tackle and go himself and he's just made him two metres away from the Salford line. Now this is Newton, Newton fires it out to Sheridan, Sheridan has Harris outside him, thinks again, kicks it to Sintelair, Sintelair, gives it to Harris, Harris comes back through the middle, looking to straighten up the play and gives the Rhinos plenty of options in the middle of the park. This is Sheridan, Sheridan feeds it inside to Sintelair, Sintelair to the line, yes, Marcus Sintelair scores, and clever play there earlier, they bring the play into the middle of the park, gives you options either side, you stretch the off for defence, and that's exactly what Marcus Centlay was able to do there, Phil. Yeah, it's, it's coming up to one of those games where the next score was always going to dictate it. If Salford had got it, he would have pulled them in with the confidence to try and push on. But that try possibly kills them off. Again, clever play. It's the fact that Yessin Harris has moved to stand off. It gives Lee so many options. St. Hilaire linking from the back. And Salford's defence in the last 20 minutes of the first half was exemplary. But it Paul Sterling returns then. This time a substitute for Brad Godden. And Justin Harris, Harris adds the extra two points. That's his second goal of the day. And it gives the Rhino a 22 points to six lead with six minutes gone in the second half. And uh, Sterling will go to the wing. Darren Cleary ordering people around, making sure that people are in the right position for this kickoff. Certainly is an authoritative figure out there. Telling his teammates exactly what he expects of them and proving it with his big runs taking the ball forward as is so often the case with the Rhinos forwards now Sheridan Sheridan collects he's judged that well there this is Anthony Fowl Fowl drives it up bounces out of one tackle oh he's having a storming game tonight it's Anthony Fowl and here he goes again Alfred just manages to bring him down 22 metres out from the Rhinos line this is Sinalea Sinalea has Hay outside him dummies and goes himself he's on for a hat-trick now Marcus Sinalea so he'll be uh, looking to seize on every opportunity that comes his way this is McDermott McDermott hits the line well draws in three defenders to the tackle picking up the ball away here Lee. there will be gaps this is Morley Morley juggles the ball as he goes into the contact situation by Milo in the tackle Morley looking to get the ball away just couldn't there penalty there to Leeds well played there by Adrian Morley clever play he made sure the players were tied up and he's got himself the penalty yeah frustrating there though for Salford they, they now can't hold on to the lead drives and uh, the more they give away penalties late in the tackle count, the more it'll hurt later on in the game. And interestingly enough, they've never used a short kickoff 
And you would think that that uh, has been a tactic and a ploy this season that's caused problems for Lee. Salford haven't used it. She's clear, he drives it up over the 20, still going. Makes it up to 15. Anthony Farron in back play here. He's just had a bit of treatment from Paddy Moran. Now this is McDermott. McDermott drives it up, up to the 10. Ball stolen there and Salford doing themselves no favours here. Just piling the pressure on themselves and making things worse for themselves. They will begin to tie, as we said earlier, they only played on Sunday. This is Darren Fleary. Darren Fleary drives it up five metres out from the Salford line. Surely you'll expect a score from the Rhinos here. Harris Jinkson goes on way looking for a gap. He sees Morley. Morley, as we know, player Moore is delighted if he can score here. He got two here last season. Who we're looking to add to that tonight. Newton fires it out to Harris. Harris finds Hay. Hay skips out one tackle, gets the ball away there to Francis Tommy. Great play there by Andy Hay. Superb play. Switch the play back inside. Hay gets the ball out to Francis Cummings. A lovely try, and we set it there, expect a try, and you can't have that much pressure and expect to come away with it. Yeah, possession's nine-tenths of the law, and their league have almost continuous possession from scoring in the 45th minute to registering another try in the 49th. On the back of two Salford penalties, uh, it, it's criminal, really, whether you've got a coach or whether you haven't. It's an unwritten law of the game that you don't give away penalties. Salford didn't learn the first time. They got penalised the second time, and it really was only a matter of time and coming property. That's right, when you're down at the bottom, you're down at the bottom because you don't uh, get your heads around what the real basics of the game are. And uh, what has been good to see for the top of Reds tonight, that there is a, a commitment there and a, and a desire to compete. And there are some key, key matches coming up for the Salford Reds if they're going to survive in Super League. Some victories have got to be, got to be hard for later on this season. I don't think they're ever likely to win this one. And the best kicking up there. That is a fabulous kick from the kick line. Two more points. Now, we're still to the field again for the Leeds Rhinos. It's uh, 28 points to six, I think it is. We have to take points to six to AGT. Charlie Jones, who can and come on for Adrian Morley, so he's not going to get that try against his hand south off. And Yeston Harris is replaced by uh, Dal Towers to the reverse of that earlier blood bin. 10 minutes gone in the second half, 28 points to 6 the Rhinos lead and, uh, and really Salford looking at beaten side, this is Hay, Hay drives up to his own line, he's up to the 20 before he's met by any sort of opposition, good run in there by Andy Hay, Newton fires it out to Jamie Jones Buchanan, just from the pitch a young lad who came on against Wakefield last Friday night, makes his second appearance for the Rhinos tonight, number 34, a young player for Big Future. Or so the management uh, certainly believe and certainly he's proved that in the academy and alliance league. Newton finds Fleary. Fleary drives it all the way over the halfway line. What a bulldozer that man is. Now Newton finds Powell. Powell has Farrell outside and he finds him on the inside. Powell comes back through the gap. Still going Powell. Good run in there. This is Newton. It's the last tackle. Sheridan has the ball in his hands. He tries to kick through. And uh, <laughs> stress for there. New, uh, Sheridan was thinking about the kick, but uh, just let the ball fall out of his hands, didn't get a boot to it, and it was a knock on and hand over to Salford. Yeah, so a little bit of respite from the Salford Reds, but players not looking as though they really want this ball. And Joe Fire Marlow's taking up the left wing position. Scott Martin been limping in the second half. Neil Baines. Big lad, but the ball dropped. The referee said that was all right, and immediately Salford under pressure again. Now, this is Barry McDermott drives it up to the 30 metre line. The Rhinos conscious that they need to get their uh, point average up to get up the table. Now, this is Sterling. Sterling has a half gap. He comes back inside. Still looking for a gap. Sterling still going. Sterling. Oh, maybe could have got the off road. He did out to Centre Lair. Centre Lair still going. Look for a hat trick. Marcus Centre Lair is going to make it. No, he's just dragged down, two metres short of the line. Now this is Sheridan, Sheridan, Crompton very quick out of the line, there will be gaps there if Lee can capitalise, but Fleary's just dragged down on the 10, good play on the fence there from Salford, they're aware to the dangers. 12 minutes gone in this second half, this is Powell, Powell driving at the line, but he's just dragged down as well. Needs to be looking to create something here, this is Sheridan, Sheridan goes himself, off flows out to Fleary, Fleary still going, still going, Darren Fleary, 
He's crossed the line. Did he get the ball down? Steve Presley's having a long, hard look. He's going to see his in-goal judges, which would suggest that he's going to give the try. He is. Good play there from the Rhinos. Fabulous support play. And Dan Fleury comes up with a try. It really is a, uh, a nail in the coffin for Salford. That takes you to 32 points to six. And Phil, you were talking about the, the points difference being crucial to this league table at Wilby. Yeah, Leeds could go into a top five space tonight. Obviously, that, that was a game more than everybody else has played. But psychologically, that could be important going to Warrington on Sunday. I think it was the, the great Australian coach, Jack Gibson, who coined the phrase, too big, too strong. And that's exactly what Leeds are tonight. You saw that with that set of six there that virtually covered 100 metres. And, and really, it was the power of Cleary on the back of charges of people like Farrell and McDermott. Uh, it's just opening up Salford now, and, and Leeds could go on and, and register the points that they lost at St Helens uh, earlier last week. Darren Cleary being congratulated by his teammates. Terry Newton making his way to the, uh, to the bench. He's been replaced by Yestin Harris, who now comes on as a, uh, a full substitute on earlier as a blood bin. That would mean that... that um, Sheridan will move to hooker, presumably Yestin at scrum half, role he played at uh, London last season, late on, and he's never played there before, so uh, we'll see how it does line up, that seems to be the, uh, the obvious way it would work, we'll wait and see. Now Salford will have to kick the ball back and really lead, as we said earlier in the game, they didn't manage to do it then, we'll want to pile the pressure on, really inflict the pain and make Salford feel the burn. As you mentioned, Phil, they haven't tried a short one. They've tried a short one now, and they've knocked on from it. Hudson Smith couldn't catch the ball, and maybe that's why they didn't try a short one. Well, I'd have tried it earlier, definitely, because uh, it does cause problems with opposing teams. If he's taken the ball cleanly, had a run to the line, at 34-6, it doesn't make a lot of difference. Leeds scored three tries in a similar period in the first half, and then uh, were, were thwarted partly by some very good Salford defence and partly by taking their foot off the gas. I think the message will go out, and, and the fact that Yestin Harris is back on the pitch now, the message will be to score as many points as possible. And there he is, Harris at scrum half, he feeds Golden, Golden tackled there on the 30 metre line. Now this is McDermott, McDermott driving up, he'll begin to find gaps, and he's the ball stolen off in there, penalty, Crompton, there was at least three players in the tackle there. I think Crompton was in on the tackle, couldn't believe he'd come away with the ball. He throws the ball away in petulance now, and uh, really Salford can't wait for this final hoot. Unfortunately, we're only 15 minutes for them in the, uh, in the second half. Fortunately for the Rhinos, there's 34 points to six up, and there's plenty of time left on the clock. Only 17 years of age, really a, a player with a great future in front of him. This is Farrell, Farrell drives it up. Still going, Anthony Farrell, he's got to be the Rhinos man of the match, I would have thought tonight. He's had a storming game really has been an ex like an extra centre out there and uh, his dynamic running and his great angles of running that really catch the fences napping Powell feeds Hay, Hay driving up the line still going, Andy Hay still going up to the 25 good running there now this is Sheridan, he finds Fleary, Fleary he's had a sent for the line, he fancied a bit more this is centre layer, he's got two already he'll be looking to grab the hat-trick tonight if he can now Sheridan finds Harris, Harris has McDermott outside him McDermott dummy to Harris, usually the other way round, but uh, great friends there, obviously learning from one another. Now this is Powell, Powell dummies and looks dinks and goes himself, gets the offload out to centre layer, this is Fleary, Harris has the ball in hand, he puts a little kick through which Marvin Golden will chase, and the tackle will be made, and Salford will be penned within their own goal line, and more and more pressure being heaped on the red spill. Yeah, again now self-inflicted pressure, because Crompton definitely stole the ball from McDermott, old Ireland colleague. Certainly uh, Anthony Farrell would be a, a, the leading candidate as a league man in the match, but you have to be impressed with Andy Hay tonight. Since he's come back from his broken hand, he's been absolutely awesome, and Salford can't hold him on the fringes out wide tonight. He must count himself, unfortunately, he hasn't been included uh, in that great brand training. Yeah. Well, if, if we were going to be controversial, which of course we're not here to be, you would say that uh, he's well ahead of Dennis Beck. And so Farrell drives it up to the 20. Sharon feeds it out to Powell. Powell has plenty of runners outside, and one of them is Harris. This is Centre Lair on the wraparound. Centre Lair still going, but he's eventually dragged to the ground just over the 20. This is Leroy Rivet. Gets it to Harris. Harris turns and goes himself. He fancy sees the gap, but it closes quickly in front of him. Sheridan in at dummy half. He feeds it out to Powell. Powell 
Smith moves to McDermott. Hayes still going up to the 10. He's tackled there. Powell goes to the short side, looking to work it. This is Cummins, coming. Oh, second try for Francis Cummins. And really, with 18 minutes gone in the second half, he goes in there and he talks about pressure, but that's exactly what we're talking about there. Complete pressure, completing your sets of six, and really you'll come up with the tries eventually. Yeah, two very clever pieces of play. Put that one down again to Andy Hay. Going out wide, he was stopped that time, but it took two men to stop him. That was the... Uh, the, the, the nail into the Salford defence but it was well read by uh, Daryl Powell saw that the blind side was where the extra man had come from took the ball there easily positioned Francis coming to the line and this is now becoming a romp for Leeds Chief Leeds decided this, re this week that relegation would stay and uh, to lose their Super League status would be uh, a, a death knell for, uh, for any side and Powell looks at the two points he just misses it there Barry McDermott comes off and Danny Ward back on to that uh, I make it the full complement of substitutes for the Rhinos they've had uh, two rubbings and they've been able to spell the players plenty Darren Flynn again we really do get uh, an advantageous position up here in the gantry position where you can see the players but maybe some of the spectators don't uh, see the action you really have what, so many generals out there that really do command the team and get them going. Now, Danny Ward, he'll be looking for a big game now. He's come back off the bench. Likewise with Jamie Jones, Buchanan, two young lads who've got plenty of time. They've got 20 minutes left this game to impress. Another short kickoff by Tolfa Red. Steve Blakely really rollicking his side, telling him to chase the short kickoff. There's no point in doing a short kickoff if no one's going to go after it. Darren Fleary is able to pick the ball up there. Now this is Rivet, Rivet dodges and goes again and looking to find the extra yards. This is Sheridan, Sheridan has Ward outside and Ward now collects it. Still going Danny Ward, good running from the youngster. This is what the ideal situation for Graham Murray to bring some of these youngsters in. Now Farrell can't collect, the ball's gone backwards has it? Oh no, he just as he's caught the second, second attempt to try and get the ball, he just knocks it forward onto the ground. The Salford will eventually get the ball back now after a prolonged period of nearly, uh, I'd say, 15 minutes of Leeds pressure. That's right, and uh, I think it's, it's, it's five minutes at least since Salford have touched the ball in, in their own hands, but uh, looking uh, at the spirited side after so many promising things. And there's a good little break. Oh, not a great play. Harry threatening that inside pass to Mark Jarrett. Nice passes playing by the fans, the referee agreeing with them. Uh, it's a crowd who uh, I think encouraged Mr. Presley to see it, see it off the red row for that one. Uh, 38 points to 6. It's all 6, 21 minutes of the second half done. Showing that they do have some ability and flair to uh, create an extra passing movement, creating a bit of space and a real chance now on the uh, Rhinos' fancy. And this is the Farm Arles. I think this is his first appearance this season. Firm favourite last year, good to see him out there. Now Colter working the short side. Carries just can't find that elusive way through. Briggs is in the line. Has to hold on, hold on. Hudson Smith is there with a chance. Bobby Thompson. Oh, had many support. Joe to go on his own. Colter so close to that line. Joe Fimalo nearly there. And Colter's best attacking moments in the second half. Halfway through the second half. Little inside short one to David Bradbury, but David Bradbury stopped dead in his tracks. Now he's got men over to the Salford Dredge if it can go quickly enough. Blake is holding on, stepping and striding, and stepping inside support. And Salford Dredge still enough forcing the way over the line. Well, I think the Salford Dredge fans were wishing that to be a score, and the referee agrees with them. And when you're 38 points to six down, then that score is one that is really a team from grit and determination. And Craig making with the man who at the end of it got over. Blake was involved, stretching the defence, making room inside. And that we stayed in the game and put the team at the Demonstrating a little bit of heart, a little bit of commitment, a little bit of surprise, and putting another try on that again on the scoreboard. He lines up the kick now. He does exactly that. That means that uh, Golf Reds now have 12 points to learn to try in each half. And uh, Lisa can give him a boost to you know, get them back in the game. 
just been a little bit dunky to make it a little bit more worthwhile these last 20 minutes or so, less than 20 minutes. But the, uh, I think the Rhinos obviously are dead taking the foot off the pedal now, they know, the, they know the game's won. But it's good to see that the Top of Reds can still put something together and that little something has lifted the, lifted the voices of the, uh, of the Salford faithful having a lot to endure these last two seasons. But the Kenny Sam great choice from him, great applause. <laughs> so that handoff is uh, of Jaden and there's Brother Joe and the Salford Red fans who would think that Salford were on their way to Wembley with the, the vocal support for that following that train Jay Bacon has been scored the try still going forward and Salford in a good deep line looking to use it with some conviction like that into space Look at all the balls going backwards, but it's also Calvin snaps it up. And then still things falls, but not very far because the Rhinos defence. Oh, but still the ball release, such an important period of play, but not a cohesive line from the Salford Red. David Dadsley though makes it his, and again Bargy stays enough, but drops the ball in the process, and immediately the Reds are on the defence. Great play there from Ryan Sheridan. We've seen it so often this season, he's a real smuggler of balls and, and always there to poach any half charge. Uh, that's the equivalent of a of, of a striker, someone like Ian Rush, he's always there pouncing on Chartsy. Sterling maps up there. Hay feeds Ward. Ward drives it up to the 40, spins out the tackle. Good play there by Danny Ward. This is Jamie Jones Buchanan. He makes it up to the 30. Two young players involved there, doing a lot of hard work and uh, showing their worth in, within the squad system here at least. Now this is Powell, Powell feeds Powell, Powell. Looking to offload, put down on the 20. Powell looking for a half gap and finds Harris. Harris feeds it out to Jamie Jones. Buchanan, Buchanan coming through the middle there. Looking to offload. He's oh, just nearly got the ball away there to Dow Powell. But uh, Powell couldn't quite collect and Salford come away with the ball. Yep, Salford still working hard at the defence in their own way. 25 minutes in the second half done. Trying to run it forward, but. Uh, Tackling the same conviction. Trade making nice pass on to him. Oh, now's an ass there. Now's a chance. Now the support. The support is going to be side. He's much support. Thompson needs to go in. Where's the support? There it is. Oh, there it is. It's on his score. It's all from the score. The goal is catching fire. Bobby Thompson making that one. Great opening from him. Pat Dins it. I just relaxed a little bit, but that was the self with the tacking machine springing into life. And in the end, it was just important enough to get the pass over the top of the defenders. Onto, I think it was Mark Johnson on the right hand side. For what will be a debut score for him. Twice he's setting game for the Salford Red, but his first try to prove him five score in with the lead. And the Salford Red fans, well, they're uh, saying that they've won this last five minutes of the game. He's only scored two tries to none to the lead downhill. And Mark Johnson is physically the try scorer. Great break from the Salford Red. It looked as though he might have knocked it up in the end. And the lead defence was there and in covering, but the ball bouncing kindly for Mark Johnson, who went over in the corner. Come out of nothing there, the, um, the first try. Dolphin put a lot of pressure on, but he looked too well wrapped up. They spun out on the last tackle, he didn't complete the tackles, and they'd have come down the sideline. And uh, sheer numbers, Paul Sterling trying to cover two players, a couple of missed tackles, and uh, the kick there for Steve Blake, a lovely kick there for Steve Blake makes it um, 38 points to 18, just 20 points in it, and uh, great, great play there, and really nothing more than uh, Tom for the last five minutes or so, they have put the pressure on, and Lee haven't been able to capitalise, they've had plenty of ball leads, they haven't been able to create spaces, and uh, so for certainly those fans that have turned out to eat, not many of them, but they have, those that have turned out being rewarded by their team in the, uh, in the last stages. That's right. And the Salford faithful love their singing. A feature of the Salford support is that the lads get behind them and sing the heart out. For the lads, no matter what the score. But that is a great state in the pressure. Great state. And now the Salford Red fans really have something to shout about. Two tries in quick succession. The ball released and it goes uh, comfortably to, uh, well, not, not that comfortably, but eventually safely to Mount Alter. And the referee is going to reduce what's happened. And uh, Malcolm Alfie gets up with it, so Salford still has possession. David Bradley trying to bark his way through. 
uh, of this game. Mark Kowalski has chosen as the golfer's man of the match. Phenomenal work right from the young young lad uh, who plays number nine, the, the hooker, and particularly as he's just back from uh, his shoulder injury. Adrian Morley back on the field for uh, Anthony Fowle. Harris feeds it out to Powell. Powell does well to collect now. Wild pass from Yeshin Harris. That's why he doesn't play scrum half regularly. Now Cummins. Cummins goes from dummy half. He can use his speed and power. Makes it up to the 20. Now Sheridan. Sheridan finds Fleary. Fleary over the 20. Making his way to the 30. Now Sheridan. Sheridan. Got runners, one of them Hay, Hay, dummy to Jamie Jones, Buchanan. Making good 10 metre runs here, the Rhinos. This is Ward, Ward still going up to the halfway line, but uh, last tackle now for the Rhinos. Just one up stuff for the Rhinos, just trying to get back into this game and just calm things down. But that goes straight down the throat of Bobby Thompson, a man who must have been very unlucky to miss out on the man of the match award here tonight. Absolutely right, it certainly caught the eye with his breaks that have led to the tries that Colter scored in the second half. Stafford releasing this ball well. Played making perhaps not quite ready for it, but it still sets off on a run and makes good yardage forward. Yeah, this is there, the support is there. And David Bradbury still going forward, down the stairs from him. Blake has seen an opening, and he's also briskly close from Blake. Now can Blake go all the way? No, he's got the point here, and Hussey Smith is going to score another superb try for the Salford Reds. And the Salford Reds are buzzing in the last 15 minutes while they haven't seen them this season. That man here is Steve Blake, his blistering face, getting through a gap there. And here he is, that's the more than one need to see. Hudson's in support. Took a difficult ball to have enough space to go over and score. Yet another that for this try that the Salford Reds have scored. Oh, fantastic recovery from them. And it really, they're going to finish this game thinking that in this important match on Sunday against the London Broncos, maybe they've got a real opportunity to get their fourth lead point on the board. Great recovery from the Salford Reds. Yeah, wonderful run there from Steve Blake. Right? You wonder if we are seeing uh, Lee Tyre, as we said before, as we said last week, I was saying, how is it? Is he beginning to try and go into the last 20 minutes of that game? Is, is that a case of Nigel? I think it's more a case of the fact that they've taken off McDermott and Newton and, and Morley for quite a, a time in the second half. They've replaced them with the likes of Ward and Jones Buchanan. And you have to credit Salford, they've picked the right people to run at. When you see things like that from Steve Blake, well, you just wonder why he doesn't do it more often. He's got the pace. He can see the gaps, but that's twice he's done it in the match, once in the third minute and once in the 76th minute with the right people to run at. When you see things like that from Steve Blake, well, you just wonder why he doesn't do it more often. He's got the pace, he can see the gaps, but that's twice he's done it in the match, once in the third minute and once in the 76th minute. You, you have to say, why didn't he do it more often? So he's points in 38 it is, and there is a great spur of pressure from the Reds. Yeah, eight points, Will. It's too much, perhaps, to hold that they can score two more tries in these last four minutes. But you never know the way they've got this ball with momentum at the moment. And they've got an appetite for the game, which is so good to see from the team at the bottom of the league. Not a win this season. 36 points, 38 points to six down. And they've come back and got back to 38-20. And uh, the Salford Reds fans really recognise this fight back. And that's really right, Phil. Steve Blake with so much potential there, and yet we we only see it in bursts. Uh, there again, it's all good red. Great. You couldn't believe that they played on Sunday against against the Bradford Bulls. The way so late into this game, they got so much endeavour and enthusiasm for it. It's fun, fabulous to see, and really, it's going to warm the heart of all the Salford spectators. We've had a dismal season so far, but maybe this could just be a turning point. Bobby Thompson's up there again, and he gets, oh, I thought he released the carriage then. Carriage onto Foster. Foster pushes one off. Not attacking though, but he's down and he's up and leaves defenders having to throw themselves up into putting down. 
I don't know why Foster hasn't been playing more this season. Now it's the kick. It's a high one. It's hanging. There's men all with the goal for if it comes there. Oh, it goes to the ground. It's taken and in touch, and that's going to be a Salford put in. And going to be more Salford pressure. Oh, well, let's see who, who puts, puts the ball down. Was it Salford or was it Leeds? And I think the uh, touch judge is going to decide. Well, he's going to decide. It is uh, the lead player that pushed it back. And lead player went into touch and uh, another friendly decision for the Salford Red. Well, he talked earlier that uh, the decisions were consolation. Now look at the score, which is 38 points to 30. And uh, these decisions by Steve Presley and touch judge could cost Leeds the game. Well, it would be nice to think you're right. Bobby Thompson straightening up. That decision that time, I think, was aided by the the sort of judges version of events that's open inside the 20 and in the 79 minute going forward look at that great stamina so late in the game fabulous from the Salford Reds and this is unbelievable after what we've seen that they should now be able to put so much pressure on Carl Biggs having to having to stop and stand and wait and come back the other way big hit on him nonetheless he gets up plays the ball leaves defence Holding firm, nice long pass. Oh, it's intercepted. And here's a chance for the Rhinos on the break, but the cover from Hudson Smith is enough to stop it. Ball dropped, and the referee says it's all right. Now he's a chance inside for Judge. Here comes El Salmarabu, comes back inside. Can't release the ball. More pressure from the Salford Reds in the stand. Seconds of the game, 40 minutes on the clock. David Bradbury going in. Now can Salford. No, they can't. So Salford thinks the game on the best part of the game this season. Thank you. 